Hello, I'm Major General Mike Walsh, and I'm the Deputy Commanding General for Civil and Emergency Operations at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Until last November, I commanded the Mississippi Valley Division for almost four years. I'm proud that while I was there, we led the nation in P-2 execution. I tasked our districts with implementing their three-year civil works program in P-2. P-2 was the key to producing regional three-year program forecasts. These look-aheads provided an accurate analysis for regional acquisition strategies, FTE allocation and usage, regional workload management analysis, and regional rates and total labor multiplier forecasts. One of our main goals was to become regional-centric, so we began using P2 as a source of all the data. With one central database, we were able to ensure our data was consistent within the vertical team. We also reduced redundant data calls, something I'm sure the people in the districts very much appreciated. As we move forward regionally, it was vital to focus on data quality. Good data quality helps the project manager manage his or her schedule and budget. It benefits the resource providers who manage their resources, and it also benefits the people at the division and the folks here at headquarters by allowing us to conduct meaningful workload analysis. With accurate three-year program data, P2 provided information for the FT projections, regional board decisions, and functional workload management. I'm convinced what worked for us in the Mississippi Valley Division will work for the Corps as a whole, as we're going through major process of transforming the Civil Works program with a focus on planning studies, budget development, asset management, and the methods of delivery. Resources are going to be tight. P2 will enable us to make the wisest use of them all and also aid us in reaching all four of our transformation goals. At this time, let me introduce you to Andrea Perkins, the Regional P2 Program Manager from the Mississippi Valley Division. She'll explain some of the benefits of using workload analysis at the division level. You'll also hear from Lindsay Robson, the Program Analyst and P2 Coordinator at Norfolk, and she'll talk to you about how workload analysis can be done at the district level. Andrea? Hello, my name is Andrea Perkins, and I am the Regional P2 Program Manager for the Mississippi Valley Division. In 2008, General Walsh tasked us with creating a reliable schedule for the three future years in P2. Our challenge was to create a culture where each team member was responsible for ensuring that accurate schedules are maintained in P2. It is vital that senior management have a high level of confidence in their P2 schedules in order to make informed decisions for the regional workforce management. These decisions are impacted by district and division decisions built into the P2 schedules. Our major focus is regional workforce management. We develop a three-year program schedule using a consistent regional budget approach. Here you can see the battle rhythm that depicts our regional governance and milestones for the year. We use the Community of Practice, or COP Workload Sharing Report, from the EDW, the Enterprise Data Warehouse. This data is then used to create a P2 data quality report. Data quality is extremely important. It ensures that management makes good decisions about the workforce. If you choose to hire, you must have good data that shows additional employees are needed. The COP Workload Sharing Report gets used at the Regional Management Board, or RMB, to discuss the future workload and workforce needs. Project schedules require accurate details to assist in decisions about future years, knowing that we need to do the best for less. In April, at our RPRB, we approved the guidelines on how to do workforce shaping and approved the budget for a three-year program based on the President's budget. At this meeting, we review all pieces of the program, getting buy-in from the team, and creating a realistic three-year outlook. This pushes our planning horizon out three years, not just the current year. At this point, we put into effect some regional resource guidelines to complete projects based on workload sharing between districts within our division. We also established regional guidelines for hiring, rehired annuitants, and historical attrition rate for forward planning. Pictures are worth a thousand words, so to help people understand what portion of the workforce we are evaluating, we put together a picture. This shows that the direct labor is the largest portion of our workforce. The schedules in P2 provide you with an estimate of your direct labor needs, which drives your indirect rate. We have been very proactive in direct charging, ensuring we budget and execute at an 85% rate. During the RMB, we use roll-up slides. 
The first roll-up slide gives an overview of the onboard FTE and the future year P2 FTE requirements, showing deltas of 15%. The second roll-up shows the difference between the onboard FTE and the P2 FTE requirements, showing us excesses and shortfalls. On the third roll-up, we show the dollars with the FTE numbers, identifying deltas and forecasted budgets. Each functional area must define their workload and workforce planning. Each function is required to report the same data based on the information pulled from the EDW in the workload sharing report, and any erroneous data must be explained. As their functions define their future, they must address their right size structure, how to deliver their function, define how they will bridge the gap, develop staffing strategies, and define the way ahead. All these forecasts and decisions are based on the P2 data in the workload sharing report. Since we have been using P2 as our main source of data, we are sitting at a point where we are focused on data quality. We are working on a regional P2 management plan, defining major items that each district must complete. This will enforce data consistency, allowing senior leadership to make decisions that ensure mission success. Doing business as usual is no longer an option. We must continue to evolve and be innovative. MVD is proud to have implemented a successful regional workforce management program, and we encourage other divisions to utilize these valuable tools. Hello, I'm Lindsay Robson, and I'm a program analyst and P2 coordinator for the Norfolk District. At the district level, we use workload analysis reports to review resource availability for the next three years. The trend is based on conservative income assumptions developed by the Regional Project Review Board. Each project manager is provided with a project budget to coordinate scheduling and resource planning with the project delivery team, or PDT. We conduct a series of in-progress reviews to ensure data quality is sufficient for useful analysis. The District Project Review Board and supporting branch chiefs utilize this data to make informed decisions. They make recommendations on regional project delivery and future staff planning. The final recommendations are coordinated by the PDT within the districts and formally approved at the division level. The workload analysis reports are available on the Enterprise Data Warehouse, or EDW. These tools are vital in allowing us to shape our workforce and align project resources. You will find that these new reports have been optimized so they are fast and easy to use. The EDW allows you to drill from summary level data down to project and task level details. We can easily compare workload across organizations. Now we can see who is doing work for us and who we are doing work for. Districts are the foundation of this process, so it is our duty to maintain quality P2 data. This enables everyone to benefit from fact-based decisions. From listening to Andrea and Lindsay, I hope you get the idea of the reliance we place on using P2. As we continue to transform our program, P2 is providing us with valuable tools to help us achieve our goals. I want to stress to each and every one of you that by inputting good data into P2, you empower the entire organization. You will allow us to make decisions based on what's actually happening on the ground in real time and enable us to move from making gut-based decisions to fact-based decisions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You're all doing great work for our Army and our nation, and I believe that with this tool, we'll do even better. Essayons, building strong.